been, you know, as it is every time I come to these events, it's brilliant, you know. Um, I was a little tired this morning, uh, the early morning sort of catching me up, but, um, but no, you know, you, you perk up so quickly because it's just great meeting all the fans and everyone's so lovely. And, um, yeah, it's wicked, like, we just had a really good time, as I always do, so, um, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm not, I'm not as tired as I thought I was going to be. And it's, it's, it's quarter past three, I'm doing all right. When you're not here, do people stop you in the street and, and do they, they recognise you a lot? Um, yeah, I mean, it happens. It sort of more happens around Leeds, where I live, because people know that I'm from Leeds, you know, so they sort of see me in the local papers or whatever, so they're like, oh, right, OK, cool. And so that's kind of nice, you know, it's good. It doesn't happen hugely often, though. I mean, I, I don't think I look too much like, like I used to. I, so it's, you know... I'm quite lucky. I think when the new film comes out, it might be a bit different, but I'm kind of lucky because I can, I can do all the really cool Harry Potter stuff, and then I can go home and sort of disappear, and uh, I get the best of both worlds, really. It's cool. Now, if you don't mind me saying, you look a lot more debonair in real life. How do they transform you from what we see now to what we see in the film? Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no, basically, we've had all, all kinds of stuff over the years. They've tried, um, well, horrible clothes for a start. Neville doesn't dress very well. Um, we've got, um, we had a, a fat suit from film three onwards, and we had uh, false teeth, uh, plastic behind the ears, stick the ears out, um, terrible hair, terrible, terrible hair. Um, yeah, they've had a, a whole bunch of little things to try and make him look a little bit goofier. But um, this new year, you know, Harry Potter 7 and 8, Neville's sort of been living underground a bit, so he's lost a bit of weight, no more fat suit. Um, his hair's just like messy because he's been not a time to get cut and he's a bit rugged and um, he's beaten and battered as well. He looks kind of cool to be honest. It's kind of wicked with all the blood and cuts and bruises, it's cool. I think Neville's a character who really grows throughout the saga and I think in the final chapters really comes into his own. Are you quite excited to share that with people and for people to see ne Neville as a hero? No, great, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, I'm a huge fan of the books and the series and I want to make sure that, that fans of, of the character and, and the story get, you know, what they deserve, you know, people who have been fans since the beginning and just see what they, you know, what they want to see on the film. I just hope, I mean, I think we've done a really good job. I think we've done as best as we possibly could do. Uh, we've not shied away from from the action stuff, from the, the dramatic stuff, you know, we've kept it as dark as the book was. And, um, you know, we've really done our best to keep it as close as possible. So I just, I hope you enjoy what we've done, I guess, yeah. You're clearly a big Potter fan yourself. Apart from Neville, who's one of my favourite characters, who would be your favourite character from, from the Potter series? Um, well, yeah, obviously, you know, Neville's a, a, is a, great, is a great character and I'm a real privilege to play him. Um, I guess if I was to pick somebody else, mm. I, I think I'd always say, like either either Lupin, so I always thought he was a really cool character in the book. I thought he was a really nice nice guy. He was a cool teacher. I liked him. But Sirius Black was always really cool. Like he was a, just a cool rock and roll style. It's the name as well. It's and, and Gary Oldman. I mean, what a le what was he like to work with? He's wicked. Really nice guy. You know, I grew up with a, you know a lot of his films. You know, he's made some some and he's a, he's an absolutely stunning actor. Like you know, he's, he's tal talented beyond belief. Um, and I remember Dan first introduced me to him, and we were just chatting about like. Like silly stuff, like Mitchell and Webb show, you know, the, the, the sketch show, we're chatting about that. Um, I, had some, I had some like multicolored Adidas trainers on, he was like, oh, my kid and my son would really love them, where'd you get them from? I was like, oh, I got them in Leeds, and just chatting about like regular day-to-day -day stuff, and it's sort of one of those things when you have to sort of take a moment out and just go, I just had a really just normal day-to-day -day chat with Gary Oldman, like, at, at work. It was really odd, like, sort of seeing these people as, as co-workers, but, you know, as you get, this was like on, like, film five. Start of film five. So as you get older and like finish film eight, you sort of you get used to it a bit more. And I was sort of you know, chatting with Alan Rickman and stuff. It sort of becomes a bit more. No, it never becomes normal. It just becomes a bit more. You know, you can, you can deal with it a little easier and, and not have to stop and go, what the hell? It's a little, you know, a little bit, a bit more easy. There's been so many fantastic stars in in the Harry Potter series. Who have you been most starstruck by? Uh, well, I always I said it that the most starstruck I've ever probably been in the films was was when I was 11 years old and I met Rick Mail. I was just, uh, it was only weird because he, he, I was just such a big fan of his, his stuff. You know, like Drop Dead Fred, I was, I was a huge fan of when I was younger. And then all his, his BBC stuff. Um, and, and I'd literally been talking about him like the week before saying how much I loved him. And then we got to the read through and he was just there, like, because he played Peeves the Poltergeist. And he got cut from the film, but he was there and he did all the filming. And he was such a nice guy as well. And I was just like, can you sign this? And he sat next to me at the, the read through. It was really cool. 
Um, but since then, uh, I guess, I don't know, there's been some pretty cool people that have, that have come through. Ray Fiennes was, a, was definitely a highlight working with him. Alan Rickman, always. Um, yeah, a bunch of people, but yeah, I'd say those three, Rafe, Alan and, um, and Rick Mayo. You've grown up making Harry Potter and it's kind of like a family. Who's your best friend on set? Uh, uh, it's a tough one. I know it's hard to pick anyone in particular. I mean, uh, Dan's absolutely wicked. You know, Dan, I get on with him enormously. We like the same music, the same style of comedy. Um, you know, we're always chatting about, we've always got something in common that we can chat about. Um, Rupert's another one, so laid back. Um, you know, you can, you can not speak to Rupert for months and then you get into a chat with him and you'll feel like you've, you know, you've been talking all the time. Like, he's just some of those laid back people you can just chat to about absolutely anything. And a naturally funny person. Just, he's gifted with, you know, natural humour. Um, Alfie Enoch's another one. Um, you know, it's really weird because Alfie, me and Alfie couldn't come from like, we come from really different sort of, he's sort of went to Westminster and Oxford, um, you know, he's had the finest education money can buy, he grew up in a nice part of London, I saw him from Leeds, you know, I went to a regular school and... Not wrong with that lad, not wrong with that. Exactly, yeah, but it's just like really a differing kind of, like, you know, I wasn't a working class upbringing, but you know, we're, we're quite different in terms of that and... But you know we just get on so well. Like he's just a really nice guy, and we we, we really have some funny funny times. And um, Tom Felton, you know, plays guitar, so we have a little jam every now and then. So yeah, so those four, I'd say. He's, he's quite handy on the guitar, Tom. Actually, Tom he's very good on the guitar, and he's not got a bad voice either. He's pretty good with his solo stuff. Um, I've heard a few of them, and he's not a bad writer. So um, it's kind of it's kind of cool to get him in like come in my dressing room and like just play with him. I like to just watch him play sometimes and pick up a few little techniques and tricks that he does. He's, yeah, he's cool. It sounds like you've had the most amazing time making films. How emotional was it that last day on set? Well, it was for a lot of people, you know. Um, I think there's a few people that really sort of welled up a little bit. I mean, I was, I don't know, I want to say I was emotionless because, you know, I don't want to sound like I was dead to the world. You know, it, you felt something, but I was like, yeah, we all knew it was coming. We were all prepared for it. And I knew it wasn't really the end. Like, I had the last day and then I was back in again like a week later for yeah. some more stuff. And then I, st I still think we'll probably have a couple more maybe pickups to do. Um, we've got the premieres in November, the, the premieres next summer in July. Still going to see everyone. It's not, it's not finished yet. Maybe next year when the last premiere is done, then I might maybe get a bit more. But at the minute, I just know I'm going to see everyone. It's not, it's not the end just yet. Are you going to be going to those premieres? Are you going to be part of the parties for those? Yeah, I hope so. You know, when you when you make a movie for, well, we started February 2009 and we finished like a couple of weeks ago. So um, you know, nearly 18 months. But yeah, I'm looking forward to to celebrating its release, seeing the movie, and um, and then having a good party afterwards.